A 2 kilogram tether ball moves at a speed of 3.5 meters per second with a radius of 1.5 meters as shown in the picture below. What is the angle that the rope makes with the vertical? And what is the tension force in the rope? Well, let's draw a free body diagram. So this ball has a weight force, mg. And it has a tension force, T. Now, the tension force has an x component and a y component. The x component is Tx. The y component is Ty. Now, in this example, what provides the centripetal force? The centripetal force is the force that keeps the ball pointed towards the circle. So therefore, Tx provides the centripetal force. So we could say Tx is equal to Fc. Ty supports the weight force. So Ty is equal to mg. In order to calculate the angle, we need to find Tx and Ty. So let's start with Ty. So Ty is equal to the mass of 2 kilograms times the gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. So 2 times 9.8 is 19.6 newtons. So that's Ty. Tx is equal to the centripetal force. And we know that the centripetal force is mv squared divided by r. So therefore, Tx is equal to the mass of 2 kilograms times the speed of 3.5 meters per second squared. It's meters per second, and then you square it. Not meters per second squared like the units of acceleration. Just want to clarify that. And then let's divide this by the radius of 1.5 meters. So Tx is about 16.33 newtons. So how can we use this information to find the angle theta? Now, focus on that particular angle. What trig function will relate Tx and Ty? Is it sine, cosine, or tangent? Based on Sokotoa, we need to use the tangent function. Tangent is opposite divided by the adjacent side. So tan theta is equal to Tx divided by Ty, based on the way it's set up. So to find the angle t uh, theta, we need to take the arc tangent of both sides. So theta is arc tangent, or inverse tangent, of Tx over Ty. So that's going to be arc tan. Tx is 16.33 divided by Ty, which is 19.6. So the angle of theta is equal to 39.8 degrees. And so that's the answer for part A. Now, let's move on to part B. So I'm going to have to get rid of some stuff. Let's get rid of this for now. I'm going to rewrite the values of Tx and Ty on top. OK, so let's redraw the picture. So this is mg. This is the vertical line. And here we have Tx and Ty. Our goal is to calculate the tension force in the rope. So we can do that now that we have Tx and Ty. 
So t squared is equal to tx squared plus ty squared, since this is a right triangle. So t is just the square root of tx squared plus ty squared. So that's going to be square root 16.33 squared plus 19.6 squared. And so the tension force is 25.51 newtons. And so that's how you can calculate it. So you got to find Tx and Ty separately. And that will give you the tension force. So let's review the equations that we had in this video. So when dealing with the tetherball problem, just remember, Tx is equal to the centripetal force. So Tx is mv squared divided by r. Ty supports the weight of the object. So Ty is equal to mg. To find the angle theta, that is, if it's this angle, that's equal to the arc tangent of Tx divided by Ty. Now, let's say for some reason if you need to find this angle. That angle, that's going to be arc tangent Ty over Tx. So just make sure you know the difference between the two. Hopefully you've taken trig at this point and you've mastered the Sokotoa concept. Now, if you need to find T, the tension force, is simply equal to the square root of tx squared plus ty squared. Or if you want to find it directly using mass and speed, you can also use this equation. So tx is mv squared over r, and ty is simply just mg. So using the mass of the ball, the speed, and the radius, you can find the tension force directly with this equation. And so this one will give you the angle that it makes with the vertical. And so anytime you have a tetherball problem, or anytime an object moves in a horizontal circle, you can use these equations. But understand this, though. If the ball is moving relatively slow, like in this problem, this is what you need to use in order to calculate the tension. If the ball is moving fast enough, and then mg becomes insignificant relative to mv squared over r. So the tension force, you can approximate it using mv squared over r. If the ball is moving fast enough. If it's moving too slow and it makes a significant angle, you need to use this equation. But if it's moving fast, where it appears to be nearly horizontal, then Tx is much greater than Ty, and so you can approximate T using this. So those are some just some simple things uh, that you need to keep in mind when dealing with the tetherball situation. By the way, what is the period and frequency of this problem? So given the speed is 3.5 meters per second, and the radius of the circle is 1.5 meters, with this information, how can you calculate the period and the frequency? What equation relates to speed, the radius of the circle, and a period? Perhaps you've seen this equation before. V is equal to 2 pi r divided by t. Now, because the ball moves with constant speed, we have this equation, d is equal to vt. And to find v, it's d over t. Now, because the ball moves in a circle, the distance around a circle is 2 pi r. And the time it takes to complete one revolution around the circle is the period. And so that's how we have this equation. So if you want to calculate t, multiply both sides by t. So vt is equal to 2 pi r. 
Now, to get t by itself, divide both sides by v. So the period is the circumference 2 pi r divided by the speed. So that's going to be 2 pi times 1.5 meters divided by 3.5 meters per second. So the period's about 2.69 seconds. Now that we have the period, we can calculate the frequency. So to make one revolution, it takes the ball 2.69 seconds to do, to do that, to make that one revolution. The frequency is 1 over the period. So it's 1 over 2.69. 3. That's the next number after the 9 if you round it. So the frequency is going to be about 0.371 Hertz. You could also say 0.371 revolutions per second. So that's the frequency. Now you know how to calculate the period and the frequency if you know the speed and the radius of the circle.